This video is about why is polar form useful and it focuses on products and quotients of complex numbers. In a previous video we looked at the effects of multiplying complex numbers together and how that had a geometric effect on the Argand diagram. And the calculation that was involved with the Cartesian version of the complex numbers was a little bit cumbersome. You had to go multiplying out all your brackets and then tidying it all up in order to figure out where your final location would be. But polar form is actually a much more intuitive way of doing this. Because like we saw previously, the effect of multiplying two complex numbers together was to combine their moduli in some way and also to affect the rotation of the resulting complex number from the positive sense of the real axis. So, OK, what do I actually mean by that? Well, when I want to find Z1, Z2, Z1 multiplied by Z2, what I'm basically doing is figuring out how far from the origin each complex number is and then multiplying those together to determine the distance that the multiplication of those two or the product of those two complex numbers is from the origin. So that would make sense to kind of relate that back to polar form because polar form contains an explicit reference to the modulus, the distance from the origin. So if I know what R1 is and I know what R2 is, I can just multiply those together to figure out how far out their product should be. So for the purposes of this explanation, I'm just after measuring Z1 and measuring Z2, and I got two and three for their lengths of their moduli, and I'm going to multiply them to get six. And then I'm going to just draw a quick circle using my compass to see all the possible points that are a distance of six from the origin. So the product of Z1 and Z2 should be somewhere on this circumference. So now to figure out exactly where that should be, I'm going to figure out the angle of Z1 and the angle, the argument of Z1 and the argument of Z2. And I'm going to plus them together and that's going to finally locate my product. When I measure Z1 and Z2's argument in this case, I get 40 and 55. So I'll just add those together. And that will take me to 95, which is located here on my protractor. And then I'll simply draw a line, the modulus, from my origin to this point out the circumference. And that will locate Z1 times Z2. So Z1 times Z2 is located right here. Now, while I may be given geometric questions with two complex numbers and asked to locate their product, in which case I can take this approach, I may equally be just given two complex numbers and asked to figure out the result of their multiplication. And if I'm given two complex numbers in polar form, it's really easy to do this. So if I've got a complex number Z1 written in the form R1 cos A plus I sine A, and I've got a second complex number Z2 written in the form R2 cos B plus I sine B, and I want to multiply them, well, just like I did in the diagram, all I have to do is multiply their moduli and add their angles. And the rule looks like this, which is much more efficient than all the multiplying out messing around that I had to do in Cartesian form. So Z1 times Z2 is R1 times R2 cos A plus B plus I sine A plus B. So let's look at this now in action. So here's my example. I've got Z1 in polar form, 2 cos, sorry, 2 cos 30 plus I sine 30. And Z2 in polar form is 4 cos 45 plus I sine 45. And I want to find Z1, Z2. So all I have to do is multiply my moduli, 2 by 4, which is going to give me 8. And then add my angles, 30 and 45, which will give me 75. So you can see how much quicker and simpler it is than going through all the long multiplication process with Cartesian form. We have an equally simple rule to find the quotient. So remember, quotient just means division. In fact, you may remember that the Q from quotient is the symbol that we use to represent rational numbers, which can be written as fractions. That's just a little link in there with rational numbers and division. And our formula for this is R1 over R2. So I'm following suit with the instruction here. I'm dividing my moduli. Cos A minus B, subtract the angles, plus sine A minus B, 
again subtracting the angles. So here I have an example with z1, 1 cos 45 plus i sine 45 and z2, 2 cos 30 plus i sine 30 and I want to find z1 over z2. So like we just mentioned in the formula it's going to be the modulus of z1 divided by the modulus of z2 which is 1 over 2 and then we're going to subtract the angles so 45 minus 30 which gives us cos 15 plus i sine 15. Job done. Really simple. If you start out with your complex numbers in Cartesian form, it can kind of be six of one, half dozen of another, whether or not you change it into polar form for multiplication and division. But when it's really useful is if you have a power on a complex number in Cartesian form. Say, for example, if I wanted to put a complex number to a power of three, you can just imagine how messy that would get multiplying it out in Cartesian form. However, it would be pretty straightforward to do it in polar form. We'd have a little bit of work getting to polar form at the beginning, but then the multiplication is actually really simple. So here's an example. Z is equal to 1 plus 1i. I want to find z cubed. I'm going to start by changing my z into polar form. And to do that, I'm going to begin by drawing an argand diagram. So I've begun by representing z on the argand diagram. And of course, then to get polar form, I'm going to draw in my modulus and my argument. So I'm going to calculate the modulus first. And in this case, the modulus of z comes out as root 2. And then as usual, I'm going to drop my line from z down to the real axis and create my right angle triangle to find the argument. And this triangle has sides of 1 and 1. I can use the tan so of theta to work out its angle. So tan theta is 1 and tan inverse of 1 is 45. So theta is 45. So z in this case in polar form is root 2 cos 45 plus i sine 45. Now I want to find z cubed. And of course z cubed is just z by z by z. So I'm going to write my complex number z down three times. And now because I want to multiply, I'm going to think about my rule. Now if we recall, our rule for multiplication was to multiply the moduli. So root 2 by root 2 by root 2 is going to give me 2 root 2. And then I want to add up the angles. And when I add these angles up, I'm going to get 135 degrees. So for just that little bit of effort at the start, getting the complex number in polar form, the multiplication process is then vastly simplified. And just to hark back to what we did at the very beginning of this video, let's just look at the location visually of where that z cubed is. So I've measured a distance of 2 root 2 on my compass, I'm putting my point at the origin, and I'm drawing a circle of radius 2 root 2. And now I'm going to use my protractor to figure out exactly where I should locate z cubed. So I'm putting my protractor down and I want an angle of 135 degrees. So I'm going to go here and when I line that up, and I can in fact, if I like, just draw in that line because that's my modulus. Well, that's the point. Or Z1, or Z cubed, just Z I should say in this case actually, Z cubed is located. Have a think about the process that we went through to get Z cubed. Is there a variation of this rule that I could use? Uh, kind of a slightly more condensed way of saying that I'm multiplying modulus by modulus by modulus and that I'm adding up all the angles. Have a think about that given particularly that the modulus is the same in each case and the angle is the same in each case. And in a future video, we'll be exploring that. And it's actually a theorem that we come across in complex numbers called de Marvor's theorem.